So I'm going to be talking about confidential business information and new chemical notifications. And let's start with a working definition of confidential business information, or CBI. Now, official definitions are going to vary from country to country, but there are, are some basic features that we can point to. Uh, first and most obviously, it's not confidential if you're legally required to, dis uh, to disclose that information. Uh, second, the information cannot already be in the public domain or it can't be readily discoverable. Uh, third, that information needs to have some kind of value to you. Or to, to state it another way, the disclosure of that information would cause harm to you, either your economic position or your competitive position. And lastly, you actually need to take steps to keep that information secret. There needs to be access control or other measures in place to prevent its disclosure. Uh, now, as we think about information that goes into new chemical notifications, and Karen provided a, a really good list of that at the end of her presentation, uh, there, there are several types of potentially sensitive information that we can think of. Again, chemical identity is a primary example, but you're also often required to describe your manufacturing process, your anticipated manufacturing or import volumes. That could be an indication of what you expect your market size to be. Uh, information on who's processing or using your chemicals downstream, lists of your customers, that's very sensitive information as well. So most countries do offer protection for confidential information in your notifications. Uh, they, they recognize uh, intellectual property rights of the submitters. Uh, but on the other hand, they also have an implied or explicit duty in some cases to provide information on chemicals to the public. Uh, and so they're really looking for the, the balance between those two uh, competing uh, competing goals. Uh, and this slide lists some of the, the common examples of restrictions that they put in place to, to try to get to that uh, balance, to strike the balance between the rights of the notifier and the public's uh, need or right to know. So the examples we've seen so far are ways that uh, governments push information out to the public, uh, but there are also mechanisms in some countries for the public to request additional information. Uh, I talked a little bit about uh, the, the process EPA has to uh, request copies of PMNs, uh, but I've grouped some other examples under the heading of freedom inf of information laws with the Freedom of Information Act in the United States being uh, one example. So such laws still generally protect trade secrets and other confidential information. So they may not result in the actual disclosure of additional information, but they can result in the government coming to you and asking you to substantiate your claims or to resubstantiate your claims. So in summary, uh, confidential business information is often a part of new chemical notifications and it really requires careful review before you submit. You're not looking only at individual data elements within your notification, but you're looking at links between uh, information and the clues that that may offer to your competitors. Uh, doing this on a global basis gets complicated because different, different countries have different requirements around CBI in terms of what's eligible for protection, uh, how you are required to justify your need for protection, how long you're protected, and how much you have to pay for it. Uh, and as we've seen for chemical identity in particular, the inventory status of your chemical uh, can impact how your chemical will be treated when it's notified in other countries. Uh, lastly, the substantiation piece of making a CBI claim is not trivial. Uh, the level of scrutiny can and does vary from country to country. But the overall trend is toward more careful review of CBI claims and their justification. Uh, the voluntary declassification program and the expected CBI resubstantiation rule uh, under TSCA would both be examples of that. So thank you.